Hello and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. Today we are starting to design the electrical power system for my CubeSat. A few years ago I found a YouTube channel called RTSet where someone set out to design and build their own low-cost CubeSat. So this basically was my first indication that at least in theory it should be possible. They started out by designing the EPS, so that's the electrical power system, and they did an excellent job of explaining how they went about it and what an EPS actually does. So for the sake of avoiding some duplication of effort, I'm not going to go into a lot of background on the EPS, but instead um, link to their channel here and in the description. And so I highly recommend pausing this video for the moment and go watch the RTSat videos first if you need a primer on CubeSat EPSs. Two more things worth mentioning here. Firstly, I am not an electrical engineer, as you probably know, and so this is not a tutorial in any way, but rather a documentation of me struggling through a hugely complex topic. And secondly, I'm intentionally keeping this kind of minimal and cutting some corners for the moment because I would like to move past the EPS as quickly as possible and get to the rest of the system. So that's the OBC, the onboard computer, the communications and the payload. My idea here is to get to an MVP of the whole system as soon as possible and then come back in the future and start improving the individual subsystems once I have a feeling of how everything likes to work together. So we are here in the Builder CubeSat repo on Codeberg, and if we uh, scroll down a bit, we get to the block diagram. This is highly simplified. I just wanted to break it down to its essentials for this, for the purpose of this video. In the top left, we have the battery pack, which is in a 2S2P configuration. So four batteries in total, two in series and two in parallel, which will give us a nominal voltage of 7.2 volts and a maximum of 8.4 volts. Below the battery pack we have the solar array which consists of multiple modules. These are 0.5 U-sized modules, so about 5 centimeters high, and they have two solar cells on them each uh, connected in series. The number of these modules that you can use of course depends on the size of the CubeSat. Um, both of these are connected to the PMIC, so that's the power, man power management IC. Obviously there is a lot more going on in this IC. I just included the battery discharge regulator and the battery charge regulator in this. The battery charge regulator basically accepts the power from the solar array and uh, use it to charge the batteries. I noted MPPT here, which stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking, which ensures that the solar cells are only used in the voltage and current range where they are most efficient. Also, I would refer you to the RGSAT video here because they have done a great job at explaining uh, how MPPT works. The battery discharge regulator basically monitors battery health in terms of voltages, discharge current um, and temperature. And it is connected to the DC regulator, which we have here on the right. This is going to be a buck uh, regulator in our case, because we need to get the 7.2 volts from the batteries down to 5 volts and 3.3 volts, which are the two voltage rails that I would like to have available. Inside the DC regulator there is a latching current limiter which basically monitors how much current is being drawn and um, shuts the connection down if, uh, if, a current, if an overcurrent situation arises. Below all of this I have made another box with uh, the OBC on it, so that's the onboard computer, which has a microcontroller that will collect some telemetry from the solar cells, the PMIC and the DC regulator. So this telemetry will be data basically about the current, the voltages and the temperatures of the system, uh, mainly as a way to you know, learn about how it works and monitor its health. At the top of this document, I have included a more formal list of requirements that I have come up with for each of these parts. But for the moment, I think it's more interesting um, to just look at the part selection and you can read through the requirements if you are interested. So for the PMIC, um, I think I would like to go with the analog devices LTM-AT62, which is a micromodule battery charger. 
So a micro module is basically just a, a product family name from analog devices. These are highly integrated small ICs that um, offer various functionalities. Uh, so there are, you know, um, voltage regulators, there are battery chargers, LED drivers, there's a whole array of micro modules, maybe I'll make a video about them in the future. I am going with this solution for the moment because the LTM AT62 offers all the features I need and is super easy to implement. Namely, what I would like from this is to be able to um, work with a 2S2P battery pack, have MPPT um, and a enable pin that we need for the uh, RBF feature and the deployment switches. I don't think we're going to go through the whole data sheet right now because that would be kind of a lengthy video, but I'll definitely link to it in the description so you can check it out for yourself. The downside of U modules it, is that they are kind of pricey. Let me just go to DigiKey for a moment. Yeah, we see that the one that has most in stock costs $23 per piece. So that's, of course, a lot of money for an IC. So yeah, that's kind of the trade-off. You get a part that is easy to implement and just gets you going really quickly, but you pay slightly more money for it than for a regular PMIC. And it's kind of a similar situation with the DC converters. Um, I have found this LTM4675, which is also a micro module, and it basically offers um, all the features that I need for the moment. It has a dual output from 0.5 to 5.5 volts at, I think, 9 amps each, which is way more than we need, and a 4.5 to 17 volt input. It offers I2C telemetry and it's the same um, easy to implement small package. So it's just an all around great solution for this prototype. And if we head over to um, DigiKey, we see that it's unfortunately even more expensive at 50 bucks. But again, I mean, it's a small price to pay for um, a lot of time saved for the moment that is. These, of course, don't make any sense at all if you're going to mass manufacture something. I mean, you don't want to spend uh, 50 bucks if you are going to build hundreds of thousands of pieces of your device. But for prototyping and small runs, I think these are kind of a pretty solid solution. So this is what I am going with for the moment for the PMIC and the DC converter. The main batteries we have talked about at great length in one of the previous episodes, which I will link to here again. And the solar cells are an interesting case. Let's also look these up on DigiKey. I have taken a page out of the RGSAT book here again. They also went with um, any solar products, but they went with uh, single cells. And what I have found are, is this module that has multiple cells on it and it kind of fits pretty nice the two of them fit pretty nicely on a 0.5 u panel so yeah that's what i'm going with for the moment they output um, about 6.9 volts uh, open circuit and 300 uh, milliwatts each uh, that's of course in ideal conditions when the light hits perpendicularly so and as you can see here, the prices are somewhat reasonable, of course, as we are going to need a bunch of those. This will also, you know, add up, but I think it's reasonable for a high quality thin and light solar cell. I think this is it for the moment. Of course, um, as I have said a bunch of times, all of this is very pre preliminary and me trying to find a way to uh, make this EPS happen in a sensible amount of time. A lot of this will change and it's all a work in progress. But yeah, for the moment, that is what I am working on. So in the next episode, we are actually going to start breadboarding with these components and um, trying to see if any of this makes any sense at all. I hope you found this video interesting. Let me know if you liked it. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.